Hello, friends. I'm Dr. Harvinder Singh. Welcome to our next video podcast. And topic for today is management of excoriation disorder, which is another name for skin picking disorder. This is a two-part video lecture series. In first part, I will only talk about management via non-pharmacological option. And in the second part, I will talk about pharmacological management of excoriation disorder. Before I begin this podcast, I just want to say one uh, announcement. I think many of you already know that the price of the course is going up to $65 annual subscription. And this will go up on August 5. So if you have not already subscribed, please do that. And uh, let me know if you have any questions about this. So let's begin our podcast for today, Management of Excoriation Disorder. So this is an interesting topic, uh, not very commonly seen, but when you see this condition, this podcast will help you in choosing your management options. So as I just said, this is a two lecture series. First one is only uh, on non-pharmacological approaches that I will talk in this video lecture. The second one is on pharmacological treatment option. But the second part is only available for course subscribers at this time. So let's begin with part number one. What non-pharmacological approaches you can prescribe or use to help your patients with skin picking disorder? But before we go into that, let me spend some time going over the diagnostic criteria for skin picking disorder, excoriation disorder. We know that in DSM-5, this is under obsessive compulsive and related disorders category. And the first co condition according to DSM-5 is presence of recurrent skin picking, which is resulting in skin lesions. That's number one. And second is patient is having repeated attempts to either reduce or stop skin picking. These two symptoms should be present for diagnosis. And then other symptoms are that we see in almost all of the disorder classification that there should be a significant disruption or impairment present in person's life, daily living. And these conditions should not be caused by an underlying medical condition which is, for example, scabies here, or underlying substance abuse, like we see in cocaine, the skin picking that happens with that. And last is, it's not explained by any other mental disorder, other psychiatric condition. So these are the diagnostic criteria for skin picking disorder, excoriation disorder. Let's discuss the non-pharmacological approaches. And when I do this, I will also talk about some literature in terms of trials uh, and studies showing efficacy of these approaches. The most effective one is cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, I will start with this study published in 2011. In this study, a patient's meeting criteria for pathological skin picking at that time and the number was only 17 patients. So patients were randomized 17 to a four session of brief CBT and rest 17 were just on a waiting list without any approaches. And uh, this study found that this intervention of brief CBT resulted in reduction, statistically significant reduction in severity of skin picking but also reduction in the psychosocial impact of skin picking and also reduction in the severity of skin injury, the second point that we talked about in the diagnostic criteria. 
and also they found a statistically significant improvement or reduction in the strength of skin picking related dysfunctional cognitions. So this is number one approach, implementing cognitive behavioral therapy. And second, which is very interesting, I found is using this internet based approach. There is this website called stoppicking.com. It's www.stoppicking.com. And uh, this approach is actually based on CBT model. And uh, it's an interactive self help approach. And when you go to this website, this is what you will see. Um, it, it has actually three different modules, starting with assessment, then intervention, and then maintenance once your patients are showing response and are stable. When I reviewed this website, uh, they say that it's much cheaper. You have to pay on a weekly basis though, but little cheaper than the therapy sessions. And uh, interesting thing is, for this approach, they had a study, and I will talk about the efficacy of the study on patients enrolled in stoppicking.com website related treatment. So this study had 372 patients enrolled, and what they found in these patients is that enrolling in the internet-based treatment also resulted in reduction in frequency of the picking episode and also reduction in symptom severity ratings. And this is very interesting. They also say that this approach is comparable or even superior to the previous research utilizing medications. So very interesting for our, your young patients who are more interested in internet based treatment definitely worth considering so this is number two number three is using hrt which is habit reversal treatment and i will briefly talk about what this treatment does and this is the approach that we use in habit reversal treatment it's basically reversing the habit of skin skin picking so in this approach first you have to I make patient identify the, um, the skin picking happening and the antecedents before skin picking is happening. So the therapist or the provider who is working with the patient makes them more aware of their skin picking and what happens before skin picking begins. So triggers and everything is discussed and patient identify that. And second is acknowledging that their own skin picking and the triggers that are happening during the session. And then the next step after that is something called competing response. Here in therapy sessions, patients are taught to do this exercise where they clench their fist for one minute whenever the skin picking and the triggers are happening. And this is how the behaviors are reversed. So it's like um, if you think of a circle where triggers are happening and then trigger to do skin picking happens and then cycle continues. So they break this cycle by putting the fist clenching, thereby changing the cycle to more fist clenching than skin picking behavior and thereby the, beha the behavior goes down. But most important thing I believe is the fourth point, which is identifying a social support. In this you need to find a person who can not only praise them for completing, res completing these responses, but also prompting them for any incorrect responses. So this is what habit reversal treatment is. And again, for this treatment, uh, I also found one study published in 2006 they had 25 patients randomly assigned to HRT and waiting list and the study found for HRT greater reduction in skin picking not only post treatment but it was also seen at three months follow up. So very important treatment again. And last one is ACT, A-C-T, which is acceptance and commitment therapy. 
and this is what um, the term means. Acceptance is person accepts their negative thoughts and feeling as a normal part of their human experiences, thereby not pathologizing their thoughts and feelings when they're doing skin picking or even before skin picking begins. So first is accepting them. And then commitment part comes into picture, which is once you have accepted these thoughts as normal human experiences, in therapy you encourage them to think of a ways to reduce these negative thoughts and emotions in a way that are congruent with their personal values and goals and thereby not to engage in skin picking related behaviors. And I have placed these uh, references below. You can find, click the link below this video and you can see all the references listed there. So these are the basic non-pharmacological approaches that I will recommend you should use before even medications are considered. So these are CBT approaches, internet-based CBT approaches, which is skinstoppicking.com, HRT, Habit Reversal Treatment, and ACT, which is Acceptance and Commitment Therapy. Please do read the references below. I have placed links to read full articles if you're interested in that. Please let me know if you use certain approaches that work best for your patients. But this was our video podcast for today. The next chapter is on pharmacological treatment options, but at this time it's only available for our core subscribers. Again, if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe to this course. The price will be increasing soon on August 5. And again, this is our social media platform. Uh, do like us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and also do subscribe to this YouTube channel. This is my email. Contact me if you have any questions, if you agree or disagree with anything. So thank you, friends. Thanks again for watching this video. You all have a good day. Take care. Bye.